if uh, everybody's ready to go, we'll have Coach Kelsey open it up with a statement for our media day. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, obviously, you know, I said way back in the summer, even when I got the job here, and I say this every single year, if you listen really close late at night, even in those summer months, you can hear the ball starting to bounce. Well, the, the ball never stops bouncing in this city, in this state. But as we inch closer, you know, to our opener, and we, we get out there in the Yum Center in front of our fans, you can feel the anticipation, the excitement building. So the fact that you guys are here today, get to spend time with our players, and, uh, and for me to be here today, I appreciate it. Questions? Coach, I'm wondering what hand you might have had in the death march of a non-conference schedule. Do you have any input into that at all? Well, um, I knew you were going to ask me that. So, you know, whatever it was, however many uh, potentially preseason ranked teams in the country that we could play, eight, many of which we didn't really have any control over. So in, in our tournament down in the, uh, the Bahamas, you know, you have Gonzaga, you have Arizona, you have Indiana. I'm talking the ranked teams. We obviously open up with Indiana. Ole Miss was, you know, selected uh, for us through the ACC-SEC Challenge. Obviously, we play Kentucky every year. And then, you know, before New Year's or right after New Year's, we obviously have, you know, Duke and Carolina as well. Um, the only one that really that we had a say in was the, uh, the adding to that mix was Tennessee. As you know, they have a Hall of Fame coach and a world-class program as well. Trying to think about back to when I agreed to that. I think it was uh, one of those sleepless nights that we had when we were trying to put a team together. And I think Josh was like getting off an airplane. It was real windy. And we said, we got to decide on November 9th. And I swear I said, we need a guarantee. And he heard, we need Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest is history there. But um, no, it's obviously a very, very challenging schedule. At Media Day the other day, many people said it's the most challenging non-conference schedule in the country. It is what it is what it is. It's the advantage of no choice at this time. And I say it all the time. Every time you guys interview me, all we can do anything about is the next thing we do. And, uh, and that's what we've been doing here in the preseason. We've been having great practices, and I'm excited about where our team stands. Got the next, you talk about the next thing you do a lot. You built the team from scratch. Then you got them here on campus. The next thing was to get going. As you get this next phase next week and begin an exhibition. What do you want to see as far as the cohesiveness? And are there challenges as the year goes on with new guys and, and keeping them kind of focused together? Well, I think there's that same challenge could be said about any team in the country, regardless of the veteran nature of your team, how many people you have returning. You know, challenges are what makes coaching exciting. Um, obviously, we've been playing against ourselves for 95% of the time from June 5th to today. Obviously, we got to play against a couple, couple teams down the Bahamas, as we all know. And then we have um, exhibition coming up next Monday, another one after that, before we get into our, our regular season slate. So, you know, uh, all teams say this, and, and I believe it, you, you continue to find out more about your team. Uh, as you move along, obviously, when adversity hits, when you're playing high-level competition, you know, roles are going to continue to, uh, to to evolve and to be defined as we move forward through the early part of this season. But like I said, the fun part about scheduling is is preparing for these challenges, challenges, and then you know, as you build and you go from one game to the next, the chess match that happens, the adjustments that you make, and that's that's the fun thing about about the rigors of the season. Is there anything you've learned, Pat, in these? since the regular season practice opened that you didn't know going in after all? Yeah, I mean, that's that's part of the process of the preseason is uh, you find out more about your team as you go along. Like, you know, um, part of a coach's job is, is putting his players in the best positions to be successful. And, I mean, so many of them are minute, minute little things, but, you know, you, you find – more about the strengths and weaknesses of each of the players on your team and how to put them in the best positions to accentuate their strengths and to minimize their weaknesses. And that's a process that every coach goes goes through. So yes, the longer practice goes on, and especially as we start playing games, uh, we'll find out more about our team and adjustments we have to make as we move forward. 
Pat, one of the things from Media Day I found interesting was uh, John and Chucky kept referring to we got to bring local basketball back. That was kind of a mantra. For a team that, you know, most of these players aren't from this kind of geographic region, they're kind of from all over, um, that's all coming together now. How, what are some of the ways you've done to kind of make them understand what it means to play at Louisville? You know, from, from moment one on June 5th when we had our first team meeting, you know, we, it's basically the first thing we talked about, you know, whether, you know, many guys in our roster right now are going to be here for one year and one year only. And the thing that I wanted them to understand with crystal clarity was you are a Louisville Cardinal and you will be forever, whether you wear that uniform for two years, three years, one year, four years, sometimes five years, you're a Louisville Cardinal. And then I explain what that is and what that means. Um, and we define that and we explain that a lot through the recruiting process too, but you know, the, the expectation of excellence here, the national championships, the 77 draft picks, the All-Americans, the eight Final Fours, like, you know, we wanted them to really understand and have a great appreciation and value the history and the tradition of this program. We talk about the former players in all the different eras, going back to uh, Pat Hickman, right, and the Denny Crum era and the Rick Pitino era, and then, you know, Coach Max players and Coach Payne's players, like just making sure they understood that they're part of a family. Um, you know, it doesn't take a, a, the, the smartest person in the world to walk out into the open air in the city of Louisville and hear from people as to um, how much they love Louisville basketball and the expectation they have for it. So that's unavoidable. And those guys know, um, and they've been hearing it ever since they got here, you know. We, we, the expectations that we have for this program is for the program to be here. And, you know, our guys know the, the responsibility and what it means when they put on that jersey and they have Louisville across their chats to not only represent this city and this school and this athletic department in a first-class manner, how they compete and how they carry themselves, but, you know, competing for championships as well. Okay. Coach, go ahead. When it comes to the exhibitions coming up, I mean, obviously they don't count for anything, but when you consider this specific situation here at Louisville and the program that maybe needs to earn a little bit more trust back with the fan base of what it is and what it always has been, how do you maybe attack an exhibition differently? Do you try and do something a little bit more or do you just go out there and play what you're going to do anyway? I'll be honest with you, we'll prepare for this exhibition like we were playing Duke. It's the next thing. It's the most important game in the history of our program because it's the next one. Like you guys all want to talk about Gonzaga and Arizona and Indiana and Ole Miss and Kentucky and Duke and North Carolina. Like I, I'm, I'm worried about, I'm worried about our first exhibition game, right? And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll prepare for those the same way we prepared for the games in the Bahamas. You know, it's so it's that excellence the way we attack personnel, you know, attack their style of play, the way we approach the game, the way we prepare, just how we roll. And then uh, kind of going back to what the roster looks like this year, a lot of the guys on the team aren't exactly from noted <coughs> basketball powers. You look around some of the JMUs, the Colorados, the guys you brought in. Was that intentional when you were looking around to see who to bring in? Were guys that stood out at programs like that and maybe could turn around a bigger, more notable like Louisville? Mm. I mean, I, I would say, you know, they come from programs with uh, winning traditions, phenomenal coaches. Um, I don't know if it, is it nine guys on our roster that played the NCAA tournament last year. I think so. So, I mean, they, they come from winning programs with winning pedigrees. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for where they played and the coaches they played for. And, uh, you know, the ease with which it is, I want to say the ease of coaching these guys, but it's a fun group to coach. Like, they are professional. You know, uh, when I say professional, not like professional athletes, but the way they go about their business. We have a very mature team, an older team, and that's one of the strengths of our team. And a big part of their development, who they are now that they're here, is, you know, the place they come from and the coaches they coach <coughs> that coach them. Pat, you're, you're so well versed in the history of University of Louisville basketball going way back. How much research did you have to do? I mean, I knew, I know you knew a lot, but you couldn't have known everything that you've been talking about. Uh, no, I mean, I've tried to be a student of this program, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not from Louisville. I'm from the outside, uh, but I'm a Louisville Cardinal, and I'll be one, you know, for the rest of my life. And I thought it was important 
as, as the head coach, the head of this organization, to be very well versed in the history and the tradition. Um, you know, I, I talked a lot about Coach Crum's era and Coach Patino's era when I was at the press conference, and a couple of those older players came up to me and reminded me of the success um, that Pat Kitman and those guys had. So I want to make sure I, I pay homage and pay tribute to those as well. Um, I, I say it all the time, and it's probably, you guys are sick of hearing it, I say it to recruits all the time, it really is one of the most storied, tradition-rich programs in the history of college basketball. And, you know, the coaches that have coached here, and then, then, gosh, obviously the players, and I have so much respect for them. Been able to meet a lot of them, and excited to meet more as we move forward. And those guys in that locker room work really hard every day, um, obviously to represent this school, but, but to, to really make those former players proud as well. That means a lot to us, and to our players, and to me. Hey, Pat. Um, when you took that year off of coaching, uh, thinking back um, after you left Xavier, and then um, you, know, you spent that season um, not coaching before you got to Winthrop, um, when you look back at that now that you're here at Louisville, what did you, I guess, take away from that time in your life? Do you, you know, to feel like this now gotten you, you know, to, you know, to spend a decade or more um, as a head coach, and now you're at a Power Five program. Just kind of like thinking back to that time in your life. What did you learn, and how did that kind of help you get to this point? In your yeah, I, I'm just a big believer that everything you do in life, and every opportunity, and every experience is an opportunity to learn. You know, I'll have a conversation with you, and you're nine times smarter than I am, and you'll give me some nuggets, and I might take one or two things back to my team. So. I've never claimed uh, to be the smartest guy in the room, but you know, I, I, I try to be a sponge. And that yeah, was an experience where I was able to get to other programs, talk to other coaches, get to practices, find different ways to do it. Um, you know, and it refreshed me in a lot of ways. Made me a better coach. Pat, obviously, a lot's been said about this team, the players, them being adjusted to Louisville and being around this program, but. What has it been the last? What has the last six months been like for you as you get adjusted to this uh, to this program and ingratiated into the community and whatnot? It's been a whirlwind. Um, you know, you moved our entire family, kids in schools, bought a new house, new job, new city. You know, it's it, but it's 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 exciting. You know, life is so short, and um, you know this is this is you know, I've said it before. Um, it's the greatest honor of my professional career to be the head coach at, at Louisville. And to look back and to think seven months ago, if I would have said I'd be sitting in this chair as the head coach at Louisville, I'd say, you're absolutely out of your mind. You're crazy. Um, the city's been awesome. You know, everybody says it's a big, small town, and it's true. It is so community-based. People uh, care about each other. They look out for each other. They take so much pride in this place. Uh, I've learned very quickly, as you guys know, that when you're talking to somebody, you ask them what school they went to, you're supposed to ask them what high school they went to. That's a little bit the same way up in Cincinnati where I'm from, but um, so he's been great. They've welcomed us with open arms, and uh, we're very proud and happy to call Louisville home. Pat, the, the transfer portal obviously having a huge game or impact on the game and in college football as well, um, and you're seeing it in college football, the impacts with, you know, kind of like the, the gimme games are kind of disappearing. I mean, as you look at college basketball, um, what do you see as far as a similar impact in your sport, as far as taking those don't take a night off type games, as well as when you get to the end of the year, how do you decide, you know, okay, am I going to go high school or transfer portal when I'm trying to fill an, an empty spot uh, from a guy who just left? Uh, so there was a lot there. Let me, yeah. let me. <laughs> so first thing is there's absolutely positively no such thing as a gimme game ever, <laughs> ever. You can ask my coaches, like, when we get ready for, ready for young Harris, like, we'll probably have more scouting and preparation meetings for that game than for Duke. Like, you know, when we're playing uh, Moorhead State in our first game, when it tips off, like, there, there is no such thing as a gimme game. Like, you, I will never, ever utter those words. Um, winning, I say this all the time, winning Division One games is hard. Like, they all have scholarships. That coach on the other team probably wants to win. You know, he, he's he's probably had some success along the way to get that head coaching job. And they're going to prepare and they're going to scheme, and that would be their stinking Super Bowl championship to come in and beat a Power Five team in their building. So there is no such thing as that. 
I, I was so thrown off guard by the beginning of it, I don't even remember the rest of your question. So <laughs> well, well, first, I wasn't meaning like gimme games. I meant kind of like the upsets, like when you see Vanderbilt being, being in Alabama, how yeah. you see something like that in college basketball as well. But really the meat was, I'm curious, like when it comes to recruiting, how do you decide looking at such games, okay, we need to fill this vacancy with a high school kid or maybe we need to hit the portal to fill this vacancy? Um. No, I just think it's important to have a balanced roster. Uh, this has been said a lot. I've said it a lot. You know, college basketball, you, know, you, have, to, you have to get old and you have to stay old. Um, the foundation, the core of your recruiting always has to be at the grassroots at the, college, at the high school level, you know, to bring in players with the vision to grow them in your program and have them develop and be around for several years. Obviously, Things have changed with the transfer portal, and that's not as much of a sure thing anymore that somebody comes in and stays all those years, but that will always be the foundation. Supplementing your roster to add experience uh, through the transfer portal is a very wise practice, and we will continue to do that. Um, we recruit the international ranks very, very hard. We recruit FIBA. We're around the globe. We look everywhere we can for the type of Louisville basketball players that can help us get to a Final Four and win a national championship. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's balanced in our approach to high school, international, and transfer portal. Pat, you talk about point guards being, you know, just like an extension of the head coach. Um, with someone like Chucky, what has that process been like for him getting here after spending, you know, three years at Wisconsin? And you know, for him to go from, you know, you know to basically, you know, a, I'm becoming an extension of you, um, you know, I'm on the court. Yeah. Uh, I just think that's what you want your point guard to be, and the best ones are. They're an extension of the, ho the, the head coach. You know, coach Prosser used to say about Chris Paul, Chris almost used to take offense <laughs> if coach had to address something on the court that he didn't see first, you know. And Chucky, Chucky's that way. Gosh, he's um, – uh, he's a natural-born leader. He's not the uh, the most vocal, although he's becoming more and more vocal, but he really leads by example. His teammates trust him. His teammates believe in him. He's such a professional with how he goes about his business. You know, point guard's responsibility is to know everybody else's role and responsibility on the floor, and he's that guy, whether it's in a defensive rotation or a defensive concept or a set play. He knows what the five's doing. He knows what's the one going. He knows what's the three's doing. He knows what the four's doing. And, uh, and, I, and I just trust him. He has so much, you know, he's not cocky, but he's got a bravado about him. You know, he is a, he has a great self-confidence about how good he is. And uh, he's been a joy to coach. He is an absolute ferocious tiger on the defensive end. He's an, a, dis, a disruptor. Um, and like all point guards do, he makes people around him better. Ben, you've talked a lot about the program and the history and the expectation, obviously, of the fans and the city and that. How do you manage that with the team, with a fan base that expects to win every single game? Mm -hmm. How do I manage it with the team? Um, I, well, the way I roll and the way I operate, obviously I'm at a different place and a different level than I've ever been, is with our guys, I try to be as consistent as possible every single day. And as you know, throughout the course of every season, in every sport, there's ebb and flows. There's up and downs. My players aren't going to see a different energy level about me after a loss and after a win. You know, it is it, 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 within these walls, when they walk in these, these walls and, and we're here for practice, it is absolute business, regardless of the circumstances of what's going on in the season. We're all well aware of what the expectations are. We're all well aware of the passionate fan base that we have at Louisville. It's one of our greatest selling points. But again, at some point, it's going to get really boring. You guys are going to have to ring a buzzer every time I start talking about the process. I start sounding like Nick Saban, who's... 25,000 times the coach I am, but like the process is what we're about. You know, it's being, being great in the next thing, and um, the, the season's a long journey. And as long as you try to stay consistent as heck in what you do and the way you go about it, and don't change amidst the bullets that are getting fired at you and whatever, um, 
I believe that the outcome takes care of itself and, and you, we are almost always the best version of ourself when it matters the most at the end of the season and you know that's that's the long-term plan but the only thing we can do about is this practice that's going to start in a little bit coach it is October but you know, I'm curious as what the identity of the team is kind of going into the season and what it needs to transform into to kind of accomplish what you want by years in. The identity of our team is always going to be founded, is always going to be centered in, in toughness, right? Like, um, it's really, really hard to play for me unless you're, you're tough as heck and you compete, you know? And um, we tried to, we identified that in recruiting, right? Guys that are about the things that we're about, um, but we're, we're, we're better. We put this uniform on. You always compete. You always, you know, the hardest playing team every time when you take the floor. Um, identity of our team as well, I think, is our experience. The veteran nature of our team. Uh, I said it the other day. The back of the bubble gum card of all of the guys on our team, you know, have 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 a pretty darn long track record, and uh, they come from winning programs, they have winning pedigrees, uh, they're efficient. Um, you know, I, I said it with, with Kanai, he's, he's the only true freshman that we're going to dress, and I said it at the press conference, we thought about allowing him to dress himself, but then we thought better of it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just, just got a bunch of, of grizzled veterans and guys with great experience that, uh, that make it easy for me to coach. Coach. Um, you, you talk about the process, and it is said you recruited to the system that you prefer and a kind of a default system. And I'm curious, <coughs> now that you've gotten the, together, seen them play in two games against opposition, how you may have had to adapt to your personnel and their talents that might be different from the system that you envisioned. Yeah, you know that's that's a that's a really good question. With obviously only playing uh, two outside teams to this point, way back in the summer a while ago. So, um, you know, I, I think as we get into game play, especially in the early part of the season, maybe the first four or five games, um, there's always and I said this at the beginning of the press conference. There's always going to be some adjustments that you're going to have to make as a coach based on, um, you know getting out there into the fire and playing against really good teams and high-level teams before you realize some of the major adjustments you have to make uh, as you move forward in the season. But, you know, uh, we haven't changed much from, from who I thought we were to, who, you know, to, to, to who we are right now. Um, but as I mentioned, roles are continuing to be defined. We're competing out there every day. We still have two and a half weeks before our first game. We're going to play two exhibition games and then the gauntlet of early season. Uh, teams that we're going to play against. So, you know, come conference play, we'll have a really, really good understanding, a crystal understanding as to who we are uh, as we move forward into ACC play. Coach, the, uh, the NCAA preseason top 25 came out yesterday. When you do the math, it looks like we come up to about 47th, which I think is a phenomenal place to be. Not too much pressure, not too little pressure. How, how, were you satisfied with where we uh, landed in that first ball? I, I could care less. <laughs> I could care less. 47, 647, <laughs> 27, 6. Let's go to practice and get better today. You know, like it's, it's, nobody cares what your ranking is at the beginning of the year. Most important ranking is what it is at the end of the year. So, is what it is. Hey, you've talked about the veteran nature of the team and the experience. You might start five one night. And you said at, at the, in the Bahamas it could be another five the next night. How do you kind of, you know, I mean, the, the guys all want to start, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's not about that, is it? And how do you anticipate maybe kind of going through that? And, and do you want to stick with one line? Um, I think if you look at our track record through the years, um, it's not major swings and crazy fluctuations in starting lineup, but I'm not that type of coach where it's like that's our starting lineup on day one and we might make one little tweak. I mean, we compete in October, and we're going to compete in practice in February, you know. And um, you, I tell guys all the time, you're always being evaluated, um, you know. We go to practice every day, and I went, I went if you're my starting point guard and you're my backup, 
try to kick his butt every day. The power of the unit when we walk off the floor, but you know, when we get to the game, I like to think game's easy as compared to, to what practice is like. But um, I'm not all that concerned with, with who starts and who doesn't start. It's more who wins the game versus who starts the game. But um, it'll fluctuate throughout the course of the year. And I couldn't even tell you who's starting for sure in, in our first exhibition yet. Coach, a lot was made uh, this past weekend about Rick Pitino returning to his former team that he helped to uh, win a championship. Could you see something like that happen here? And you know, what is your thoughts on Rick Pitino returning here? And my second question is, you and Chris Mack have switched roles. Uh, have you guys talked about or given any advice about uh, your new job? Uh, we haven't talked in a while, but we talked early on. Obviously, it's like, uh, what is that, Seinfeld Bizarro World? <laughs> <laughs> Flip from one to the other. It's, Good analogy. It's, it's kind of... Kind of interesting. I know he's a big Seinfeld guy. Um, as far as as far as Coach Patino going back to Kentucky, I mean, gosh darn, that was a captain on a national championship team, you know. And the man loves his players, and he was there to support his player. Uh, I have one of his former players on on my staff, and Peyton Siva, and Peyton Siva loves him, and I know he loves Peyton Siva. I feel like, uh, in some ways, Coach Patino's around here uh, more than people think because of Peyton. I get a Patinoism every couple days or so and bring them all on man because that cat's a hall of famer he's one of the best coaches in the history of of, of college basketball so um, obviously we'd love to have him back and he's always welcome here um, icon in this city and an icon in coaching coach one of the players that stood out for the bahamas was Kaysen Fryer. what have you seen from him and what do you think that he has to squad yeah uh Kaysen Kaysen is an extremely versatile player six foot ten um you know, can play so many positions on the floor. He's a modern basketball player at six foot ten, and that you know he can affect the game in a lot of different ways. Uh, he can stretch the floor in shooting. Um, terrific defender. Has great length and instincts. Very good rebounder uh, for a guy six ten. Can put it on the floor and play make. Um, I love I, I love everything about Case. And then I don't want you know you in recruiting. You know, you do your best to get to know people, but then once they get here, you really, really get to know who they are. Like, Kaysen is an unbelievable teammate, man. Like, I just love his heart. I love his approach to his teammates. Um, you know, Cl Coach Kloman hit me a little bit ago on text, and he goes, man, Kaysen's, Kaysen's hit, blowing my phone up right now because, you know, his defensive grading yesterday in a couple categories was too low, and he wants to know why. You know, he wants to see, and I, I love that. Very conscientious kid that uh, that cares about winning and uh, cares about his teammates, and he's been a very good leader for us as well. Is there an area, this may be an all of love question, where you say if we can do X well, knowing all the other strengths your team has, it'll be good, or, or a place where you find yourself getting on them more than others, rebounding, defense, <clears throat> be what it is, uh, anything like that you can think of at this point? Mm -hmm. I get them on them for every single thing every day, 24/7. So uh, we always have areas that we can that we can improve in. Uh, a lot of times it changes from practice to practice. Like we have a film session, and if we were deficient in a certain area in practice, then we're going to focus on that. If it was two days ago. We, you know, when fatigue set in, our transition defense got a little bit lazy. Well. You know, anymore you got to be careful. Politically correct, it's not uh, not gonna not gonna chew them out in the film session. We're gonna have a little aggressive counseling when we're watching film. So it changes. We've seen your staff. It seems like you're you guys are so close. A lot of guys you brought with you. Can you just speak to the what that means to you to have guys around you that obviously you trust and, and you know, and then maybe. I remember talking to you when we were in here doing the one-on-ones that it seems like Clo has, you have a little more, like you guys have been together for a while. Is he kind of one you lean on maybe, maybe not more, but just in a different way? Yeah, I, I don't speak enough about my staff and I get interviewed all the time, but I want to make sure I make that point. Like, I, I think I have the best basketball staff in the country. Um, they're great in their craft. Uh, they're so darn loyal. They work their rear ends off in every facet of our program, and um, and and we couldn't. I couldn't have done what we've done here in building the program in this short amount of time without their tireless, tireless uh, uh, contributions. And then 
obviously the sacrifices that all their families are making at home because there, there hasn't been a lot of home time over these, these, uh, these first five months. Um, you, you know, I think what you're going to see too is when we get to games is how much um, trust that I put in my staff, the responsibilities that our guys, each of the members of our staff have in game are significant. And you'll see probably as much bench activity from an assistant coaching staff here as you will anywhere because I trust those guys so much. You know, Brian uh, Cloman is our defensive coordinator and his assistant in that area is Jermaine Ukegbu. Um, you know, Mike Cassidy, who's who's our offensive coordinator and then, you know, Coach Hamilton and, and, and Thomas Carr kind of help, you know, help with that and, you know, with special situations as well. But, um, you know, there, there, there is, there's just so much trust. They, they know what what they they know our level of expectation they know our system so darn well and whether it's x and o stuff or whether it's player relations uh, they're as good as anybody and uh, and i'm really blessed to have them um you've been here now for about six months all out in the community meeting people you have a great energy about you and I'm just thinking for like the next few weeks, what's your plan to really ramp it up, almost like in a political campaign sense, to get all the fans, everybody you've touched already, and all those students that fill up the end zone, let's get them in here. What can we do to help you get people yeah, to um, up about these first couple of games? So it has been a lot of, a lot of stuff. Right, a lot of events, a lot of speaking engagements, time on campus, time out in the community, and I've loved it. I, I've just gotten such a sense and a feel for Louisville, the people, what this place is about. So I've loved every second of it. From that standpoint, in terms of me being out there, the hay's a little bit in the barn. Like I'm locked in on our dudes right now. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be on campus riding around the golf course throwing t-shirts out. But uh, but yeah, the hay's in the barn a little bit in that regard. I guess what. Hopefully, everybody that's you know watching your broadcast, what, what, whatever uh, whatever news station or radio station that you come from, is um, is is just a just a last shout out that 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 we need you. <laughs> I keep hearing Peyton talk about the, the the atmosphere at the Yum and what it was like when there's twenty two thousand people there, and to hear him tell recruits, and the hair stands up on my arm, my heart beats fast when I hear it. And uh, this team's done everything they can since June 5th to, to, to build ourselves to the point where we're ready to take that floor and make this city, this fan base, this student body, these former players and our alumni proud. But let's do it together, right? This isn't just my team. This isn't our players' team. This is the students' team. This is your team. This is Louisville's team. And this journey that we're starting together, we're going to have ups, we're going to have up ups, and we're going to have some downs. We're going to have doing this thing together, sticking together, and making this one of the great eras in the sit history of our city. And I'm excited to get started. I'm blessed to be the head coach here. And uh, let's go. Let's get it started. That's a great place to end it. All right. <laughs>